Have you observed how adding a little bit of curd to warm milk and leaving it overnight can change the milk to curd? That is a live demonstration of the work of prokaryotes, specifically the bacterium Lactobacillus. Just imagine, these tiny microscopic organisms are capable of so much. Prokaryotes or organisms that are made up of prokaryotic cells can be broadly classified into two groups, bacteria and archaea. Both are small unicellular organisms. Bacteria are found in a variety of habitats and come in many shapes, about which we will discuss in just a while. Archaea are usually found in extreme environments like hot springs, deep water hydrothermal vents, sulfur vents, etc. In this video, we will explore in detail about bacteria. Now, bacteria are about 1 to 2 micrometers in diameter, but their size is not an obstacle for them. Their small size makes it easy for their reproduction, getting food and nutrients and removing waste from their cells. Many bacteria that you are familiar with are pathogenic in nature, which means they can cause transmissible infections like tuberculosis, syphilis, etc. However, there are many bacteria that are beneficial to us, like the lactobacillus, which for example is used in the food industry extensively. Our gut also has several good bacteria that help in digestion and nutrient absorption. Cyanobacteria, which are present in oceans, perform more photosynthesis than plants on land and release more oxygen. With that, Let's take a closer look at how a bacterial cell looks like. Because bacteria are prokaryotic, they do not have a membrane-bound nucleus. Instead, its DNA is found free-floating in the cytoplasm in the nucleoid region. Bacteria also lack membrane-bound organelles in the cytoplasm. These two are the major differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. If you want to learn more about the differences between the two types of cells, go check out our video on prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Even though they don't have organelles that perform specific functions, the plasma membrane of bacteria have extensions called mesosomes. The mesosomes help in a variety of functions like DNA replication, respiration, cell wall formation, etc. Prokaryotic cells do have ribosomes floating in the cytoplasm. Ribosomes are the sites of protein synthesis. In prokaryotes, the ribosomes are made up of these two subunits, 50S and 30S, making up the 70S ribosomes. The 50S is a larger subunit and the 30S is a smaller subunit. Now, don't get confused by 50S and 30S not really adding up to 70S. The S here stands for Swedberg unit that is used to measure the size of a particle based on its sedimentation rate. The cell wall of bacteria is a tough resistant layer that protects the bacteria from external factors. It is made up of peptidoglycan and we will talk more about that in a while. The cell wall is surrounded by a layer of capsule that is made up of glycocalyx. The capsule is again a tough hard layer. But if the cell wall is covered by a loose layer of glycocalyx, then that is called slime layer. Motile bacteria also have flagellum which helps in their motility. Projections called pilus and fimbriae also extend from the cell which help the cell to attach to a substrate or the host cell. Bacteria reproduce by binary fission. It's a seemingly easy process. First, the DNA replicates and then the cell divides into two. After that, the DNA is distributed to the two daughter cells. Now, this is an asexual mode of reproduction and occurs quite quickly. For example, in E. coli, it can give rise to a huge number of cells in 4 to 20 minutes. They do have some form of sexual reproduction that involves plasmids. Plasmids are small, circular, extra-chromosomal DNA that are DNA found apart from the main bacterial chromosomes. 
Now these plasmids have genes that give them resistance to antibiotics. Antibiotics as you know are drugs or medicines that are used to destroy bacteria and prevent them from causing more infection. Now these plasmids have specific genes that make this bacterium resistant to those antibiotics and those genes can be transferred from one bacterium to another. Now let's take a closer look at the cell wall of bacteria. It is made up of peptidoglycan which is a polysaccharide made up of sugar and amino acids. They form a mesh like layer around the plasma membrane. Based on how the cell wall is organized, bacteria can be divided into two categories, gram positive and gram negative. What is this gram here? It's not a unit of measurement or anything. It is named after the biologist who developed a staining procedure to differentiate between different types of bacteria. Gram positive bacteria have a thick peptidoglycan layer. This makes them stain purple when the gram staining procedure is performed and viewed under the microscope. Gram negative bacteria have a thin peptidoglycan layer but after the cell wall they do have an outer membrane that is made up of lipopolysaccharides and proteins. These bacteria stain red when the gram stain procedure is performed and viewed under the microscope. So this is what differentiates between different types of bacteria. The presence of a thick cell wall causes them to stain purple under the gram stain procedure. The presence of a thin peptidoglycan layer followed by a membrane called the lipopolysaccharide membrane makes gram negative bacteria stain red when performing the gram stain procedure. Streptococcus and Staphylococcus are examples of gram positive bacteria. E. coli and Salmonella are examples of gram negative bacteria. Before we end the video, let's discuss about some of the common shapes that are found in bacteria. We have the rod shaped bacillus. This is a long rod shaped bacterium and examples include the lactobacillus about which we spoke about at the beginning of the video. Then we have these small comma shaped vibrio. Examples of Vibrio include Vibrio cholera which is the pathogen that causes cholera infection in humans. There is the spiral or helix shaped bacteria. An example is Helicobacter pylori. From the word itself you can see helico means helix. H. pylori can cause stomach ulcers in humans. Then we have the spherical coccus. Now each of this sphere is one bacterium, one cell. So if only one spherical cell is present then it is called monococcus. If two cells are linked together then they are called diplococcus. Just because they are made up of two cells does not make this a multicellular organism. They are still unicellular organisms. If many cocci join together to form a string like this then that is called streptococcus. And streptococcus is something that causes strep throat or sore throat in humans. If many cocci clump together like this, then they form a Staphylococcus bacterium. And Staphylococcus also causes infections in humans. Let's end this video with a fun fact about bacteria. Some species were carried to the International Space Station that orbits the Earth by astronauts. And the astronauts found that some of those species could survive in the harsh conditions of space. Makes you wonder, right, whether aliens are actually prokaryotes from other planets. <laughs>